Some of you are going to protests and you want to be able to take good pictures of it to share your message. Chelsea and I have been doing that lately and we're not experts at this. We're going to teach you the basics. We're going to go over important stuff like ethics, but then we're going to get into the camera gear, the camera settings. I'm going to give you a shot list to make sure that you tell the complete story of it. First of all, the ethics. Yeah, we basically looked up the ethics of photojournalism and a lot of it overlaps here. This is not just a regular photo shoot where you're just getting good pictures to show off. You're participating in photojournalism and so you're trying to be somewhat unbiased and share an experience of other people. It's not for clout. We've seen no. some influencers going out, dressed up, holding signs. That's not a very nice thing to do. Another thing is you want to stay out of the way. You don't want to be hindering the experience for anyone. You don't want to be stealing anyone's shots or interrupting anyone. You're just there documenting. A specific example, drone shots are great of protests. It's a great way to show yeah. the attendance. But if you see a drone in the air, don't put your drone in the air because they could potentially collide, fall and hit somebody in the head. That person got the shot. Yeah. Just look them up on social media later. Yeah, and another thing is to ask permission for photos of children. It doesn't have to be some long intricate conversation. You can just say, oh, do you mind if I take a photo? Everyone said yes. And generally in the U.S. at least, if you are in public and you don't have a reasonable expectation of privacy, it's okay to take pictures of people. But especially at protests, people want to be seen. Don't stage photos. This can happen a lot. People will say, okay, go create this conflict with a police officer so I can get a really powerful photo. Yeah. Don't do that. Wait for things to happen organically. Do not use misleading editing. It's okay if you want to adjust the exposure. Photojournalists wouldn't ever remove a lamp post in the background, yeah. but I feel like if you're just attending a protest and sharing pictures and it doesn't significantly change the message. I feel like that can be okay, even though it doesn't follow strictly the code of photojournalism. I, I think if you're not changing the message, yeah. then it's okay. That's something you'll have to feel out on your own. I think you also have to provide honest context. So if a little kid falls and gets a bloody nose, you don't want to take a picture that makes it look like somebody punched them or like they were injured by another person. Uh, this might seem ridiculous, but we've talked about other historic photos before where photojournalists made it look like a kid was abandoned starving or something and really the mother was right outside the frame. So you want to be responsible with how you represent any situation. And then consider the impact when sharing. So any photo that you share, you have to consider that that's now in the public and think about how that's going to influence anyone in the photo or any actions that you see taking place in the photo. As if that person sees it, their parents sees it, their boss sees yeah. it, their kids see it. Safety. First of all, bring water just for dehydration. Also, wear a mask. That is not foolproof, but it reduces the risk of transmission from yourself to other people and it's basically better than nothing. Yeah. Stay at the perimeter. Try not to get deep into the crowd. Distance yourself, especially from shouting, because studies seem to show that Projecting. shouting projects out the virus. Once you get home, shower and change your clothes and then quarantine yourself. They seem to have settled on 14 days of quarantine. We're going to get ourselves tested for it. It doesn't hurt to go get yourself tested just in if case. If you can. If people are saying like, why would you go to a protest when we're all supposed to be sheltering at home? Yeah. It's because it's, it's important, right? Like I haven't been in a grocery store since the beginning of March yeah. because I can get delivery, but Instacart doesn't deliver like equal rights for people. So but it'd be it's cool a matter of priorities. If they did. Yes, that would be nice. Let's talk about the shot list. You want to tell a complete story. Something like this, you're not looking for that one perfect picture, but rather a set of pictures that you can provide a complete context for. So I made up an acronym that does not make sense. It's MEALS, but it can help you remember MEALS when you're there. M stands for marching. Protests often move from one place to another. If you realize this and you can anticipate the path, then that will allow you to get ahead of the march. We did this and it allowed us to shoot people walking past from the front. When we started the march, we were at the back and I could not get a picture because I was seeing the back of everybody's signs. Yeah. Find yourself a shortcut. Another thing to look for is emotion. It's more of a challenge now because people are wearing masks and they're covered up. So you'll have to look for the emotion in their eyes or in their movements. Pay attention to the moments that are also making you feel something and then try to capture it. One of the most powerful parts of a protest is a large attendance, so it's good to capture that. You're not going to see 5,000 people when you're shooting from eye level, so try to find high ground. Some photographers do this by locating a hill. 
we climbed into a parking garage and went up to the top so we could look down. Other photographers will use a drone safely. I saw a photographer in our group and he found a, a photo of the line marching kind of around a bend so that he could get the front and the back in the same picture to show how long the line was, so that was really powerful. If a protest marches through the streets, that tends to channel people, yeah. and that's a really helpful way to visualize it as opposed to people gathered in a very open field. And if I can lecture about drone use, I've seen a lot of videos that are powerful, but they show the drones flying right over people's heads. Nothing bad happened that I yeah. know of, but if the drone does fail, that drone becomes silent and drops at a high rate of speed and could potentially hurt somebody. So I urge everybody to not fly directly over people. The L in meals stands for the leaders. Make a point of photographing the people with the megaphones, the organizers of it, because they deserve a little bit of credit for what they've done, but they're probably also the people who have the best understanding of the message and will be showing the most emotion. Finally, the S in meals stands for the signs. Specifically look for high contrast signs. I see people with like a brown piece of cardboard and they've written on it with a ballpoint pen. Mm -hmm. It doesn't convey well in a photo. Black and white signs, bold lettering conveys the best. And you can go ahead and almost fill the frame with the sign. Be sure to show a little bit of context, show people in the protest in the background as well as the person holding the sign. But that sign quickly and easily tells the story of the protest. Another important one is composition. Again, it's sensory overload in a big crowd. I found myself just taking pictures and kind of losing track of making sure I had subject separation. So I had to just kind of take a deep breath and compose myself and look around and look for those little compositions all over. You want to fill the frame. You want to provide context still like you normally would. Subject separation, it's important. So you might want to get at a low angle so that you can get people separated or use a low f-stop number like f28 to get that blur in the background to get the subject separation. My own personal shooting style is to get close with a wide angle lens and the way I went about that in this case was to use the rear screen and flip it out and then hold the camera at arm's length. I would arrange my shot in my mind and then I would hold my breath, I would step close to the person, snap the shots and then I would step back before I exhaled. We need to get you a scuba tank. That would be great. <laughs> Aspect ratio is something I screwed up. I got home, planned to put my pictures on Instagram and realized I took all my pictures holding the camera like this. But Instagram is either a square format or a vertical eight by 10 format. I should have been shooting like this. Vertical grip would have helped. So think about that and generally leave room to crop because then you can change the shape of the photo later. The gear that we use, your phone is absolutely fine. A zoom lens is good. That's what I use because I wanted to keep my distance from the crowd, go a little telephoto. If you're shooting primes, I would probably suggest a 24 and 85 uh, on two separate bodies, but you could go 35 and 50 or 35 and 85. And I found a tilt screen to be absolutely critical because I was frequently trying to shoot over the crowd by tilting the screen down and shooting with my hands over my head, or I was getting close to the ground and flipping the screen up. For your camera settings, you can go full auto. It's, it's gonna be fine. The only setting that I felt compelled to change in daylight was the aperture. I was constantly switching between shooting wide open to get a little bit of background blur and shutting down to like F8 or F11 to bring the background in focus, depending on whether I felt like the background was adding to the photo or distracting from the main subject. Yeah. If you get into twilight, I would probably use manual mode and set the shutter to 1 250th of a second to ensure that it doesn't get too slow because the best moments are going to be fairly high action moments where people are waving their arms and yelling and if you don't have a fast shutter speed then they'll, then they'll blurry. And lastly, Tony and I just want to take a moment to say that we do support equality. We do believe that black lives matter. And if you'd like to take a moment to support the cause, you can go to the description down below and click the link and donate. When we posted this on Instagram, I had a lot of people like trying to explain stuff to me. Yeah. But you guys know us, we research stuff. You don't have to tell us about it. Like we've looked deeply into this and this is a cause that we believe in. I got a lot of the all lives matter responses, which is just want to make clear, I do believe all lives matter, but unless everyone's treated fairly, we have to give extra attention to the ones that are not being treated fairly. And of course we're giving to the cause too. We're gonna give out of our own pocket, but also all potential ad revenue from this video. Thank you and be safe, be careful, and take care of yourselves. Bye.